Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art. And we letter a new project every week together. And we're going to add more sun to your summer sunshine. Summer sunshine. <laughs> and we're yellow, because we're going to be painting yellow. Um, we are painting this project. So this one I'm really excited about because we're going to be doing gold. So there's going to be some fun things in this pretty simple project. So three steps. We are doing, the first one is, actually, start over. The first one is we're going to be doing the full watercolor wash. So I want you to lay this all down so then we can let that dry. So that's the first step. The second step is your practice worksheet. So this you can either get, it's in your box, or if you don't have our subscription box, you can also go to our website at letsmakeart.com, download that so you can practice along with us. That's the second step. And then the third step is your gold lettering. So this is gonna be fun. We, so it's just three steps, three simple steps. The supplies that we're using, they're going to be three colors to make your sun. One is deep yellow, two is red. So instead of magenta, I decided to use red in this one to make a little bit more orange. And then the last one is gold. So the gold that we're using, this is um, gouache. It's by, this brand is specifically Windsor & Newton. Um, but you can use any type of gold if you have um, a different type of brand that you like. In your kits, if you have our subscription box, they came in this cool little container. In this, you had a small amount. You actually, what you'll see, gold goes a long way. So you actually don't need a lot. The way to get this out, actually, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to paint a little swatch so Keenan can do his thing. Okay. And then we're, when I do this step, I'll teach you guys how to use it. But I need a little bit more water. So I'll go over this. But just for Keenan to do his magic. Gold. Gold. It's very shimmery. Okay, so those are the three colors. The paper, the final project, is on our Canson watercolor paper. I am going to be using two different brushes. So I'm going to be using the round aquash brush. This is the one that also came in your box. Um, but if you don't have this, you can either use a wide brush. So what we're going to be using this for is to paint your sun. So you can either use a wide brush or if you have a round six with us from um, our watercolor box. That is just a bit outside the frame on the left. What is outside? All the things on the left. All the things. <laughs> yeah. So if you scoot it to the right, there you go. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so you can use either around six if you also have that. Just a bigger brush to, to paint the surface. And then for the lettering, I'm going to be using the round zero. Because um, you'll notice because we're going to be doing a lot smaller lettering as we go outside our ring. So those are the supplies. Have a little cup of water and you're ready to rock and roll. So step one is I'm going to paint my sun. There are options, and I like to give you guys options so you can figure out which one works for you. This is a template that I created, so you can either, if you like to use the graphite paper, you can use that to transfer your design, or this time, so I haven't used this in a while. Ooh, can you plug that in, sorry. Ooh, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. I'm gonna use a light box. So the reason why for this one that I'm gonna use a light box is because yellow is such a light color, I didn't really want to have pencil lines on there. It's personal preference. It's okay if you have pencil lines. Um, but I just decided to, oops, everything's fine. Um, use a light box for this one. So if you don't have a light box, you can also use a window or you just need some light source underneath. Um, so I've talked about if you have a clear cooking dish, place it upside down so you have a flat surface, put your phone on flashlight mode and you will be able to see through. Okay, you need to have it on the brightest mode. So what I'm looking at are my rings on the outside. So like I said, if you don't have a light box, you can also, this is actually the perfect size. Nice. You just need something that's circular and you can totally make your own guidelines with just pencil lines. 
Um, I'm just gonna stick with this. So when you are making your sun, you can decide what color sun you want. Maybe you want a red fiery sun. Plot twist, what if it's a pool of water instead of a sun? And you just so do blue. So it's like an aerial view. Aerial view, yeah. You've got a drone, you took a picture of a cool pool. Have you done that before? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool. Yes, you could totally make this a pool. Um, the thought is to have the inner one the darkest, and then as you go out, your rings or your ripples, if it's water, will be a little bit lighter color. Did you think of something else? No, but you added to my idea. There, it'd be ripples instead yeah. of a big pool. That'd be so cool. <laughs> Ugh. Um, so to make orange, let me turn that off. I'm gonna, this isn't exactly orange. It's like a, a little bit um, deeper of a yellow. So, but to make orange, if you want to, I'm just gonna add red and yellow together since we don't have orange watercolor. So that's that color. So if you want to make it a little bit lighter, then I would just, or more yellow, add a few more drops of yellow in there. Okay, when you are painting this, I'm just going to follow my lines and I'm gonna add in some yellow. So I'm not gonna have exactly a straight solid color. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit Everyone paints differently. Some people like to paint in a full circle. You can also move your paper if that helps. You're just painting the middle ring first. And then you don't need the light box anymore. But the cool thing that I wanted to show is I'm going to have a little bit, oh, I forgot. So everyone can see. Is that good? Yep. I'm going to have just a slight hint of a shimmer and so I'm gonna leave that white right there. What's happening is that I'm just going to add in a color. If you want also, you can just add um, water. But because these are liquid watercolors, you actually don't need a lot of water. And when you're doing this, I also, if you notice the way that I'm gripping it, is I'm trying to get more of the belly, so the surface of the brush, rather than like this, or like this, how we've been lettering with. It helps to get more of that surface. If you want, if you want to make it a little bit darker, just go in, have some fun. And paint that first section. Then the second section, so I want it to be a little bit lighter. So you have the option to either make the color lighter on your palette. So what you can do is you can take this orange, let me grab some of this here, and you can add more yellow to it if you wanna make it more yellow. So that's a way you can make it lighter. Or if you want to, you can just use water and make it lighter. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is if you look at this, is what I did was I made each ring ever so slightly just a little bit smaller so that this first ring is going to be the biggest of the three. So when you are also doing this is once you get to the inside I wouldn't go, unless you want it to intentionally bloom and bleed out, I would just go kind of close to it. You'll notice that watercolors, if you talk too much, like we tend to do sometimes, um, you might get a harsh line. And the beauty of watercolors is that you can wake it up and add more water and kind of overlap over it. Um, but just something to be mind, oops, I'm using the wrong color. Let's use this one. Just something to be mind mindful about. So you don't have to hurry and rush, but I um, also wouldn't go pause and watch a TV show <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, Snack breaks are suggested though, so. <laughs> For cute. Yes, I have a bag of M&Ms currently. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna add, use water and blend into it. So you can tell, you can move pretty quickly. And it doesn't need to be a solid color. It doesn't need to be perfect. And it's okay. And when I'm looking at this ring, I'm a little 
off with my shape. Helter okay. Skelter? I don't know. I was. Why did you say that earlier? No. I was about to say that, or I was about to say something <laughs> similar to that. I read minds. That was creepy. <laughs> okay. Um, then from there, so if I want to use this same color, but I want to make it lighter, I'm just going to use have a little bit of water right here. I'm going to transfer that over. So that's called creating a different value. So I'm actually, you know what, I'm just going to eyeball this. Because so you're just going to make this your medium ring, whoops, slightly smaller. And if you notice, when I speak about lettering, I always mention and I say, or I suggest to have your hand grounded on the paper. That is personal preference when you're painting. Some people can paint kind of more up in the air. Um, I kind of mix it up so I don't really follow one way or the other. I also, if I don't want my hand um, to smudge the paint, that's also why sometimes I just paint in the air. Okay. Layer two. Last layer. Wow. That, so it's cool and it doesn't bother me, but I just want to call this out is this is a lot, this is a lot lighter than this one, which it just looks different than my original one. It looks like pretty it. cool. Yeah. This feels like Saturn. Saturn. Oh, it's like how when you drew your ring, maybe at the end you draw a ring on your, the one that Sarah did. The geometric landscape. Oh. <laughs> I did not do a very good job on that one. What? Oh, but your trees. My trees okay. were, I had cool textures because my paper tore. Your paper neat. tore? Yeah, like, because it was a higher content. Oh. oh, higher content. I missed a word. Higher cotton content. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just loved the tape. <laughs> Can you see that? So I just want to make sure that you can see my lighter layer. The really light layer? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, yeah? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, the especially, little bit. Especially as it dries, you can see it more. Okay. So this last one, what's happening? Uh, it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, you are going to be writing your lettering in each of these rings. So if you don't want your lettering to be too small, you could just make that last ring just a tad bit bigger. Okay. That works. Super simple. You can keep going actually. If you want your rings to go even further, you can add it more out. I'm just gonna stick with this for a final one. Um, I realized I made this one bigger and also I cut this paper. So this is something that um, I haven't really talked a lot about. If you plan to frame this maybe, um, you might want this paper is nine by 12. So if you have maybe, a lot of frames are eight by 10. Um, so if you wanna cut your paper first, if you do plan to do this, or like this, I just left more room so I can cut it at the end and I cut it pretty close. Um, so you have options if you want to do this, but this is just for practice for us. Um, Okay, I'm going to let that dry. So that was step one. And I didn't even, oh no, I used red to make orange. I was like, I didn't use that much red. So you can make your however you want. Okay, for your practice lettering, I created three different practice sizes for you guys to do. When looking at this, this is the large, this is medium, and this is smaller. So that reflects the different rings that you have. So when you're practicing, what I suggest doing is actually just practicing with your watercolors because you're just continually trying to gain muscle memory. Um, so you don't have to use it with gold. You can use it with your just watercolors that you have on your palette already. I'm going to be using my round zero for these because my lettering's so small. So when you're doing this, you can either trace over my lettering or you can use these as your guidelines. So when you're practicing, you can say to yourself, thick on the down, thin on the up, 
thick on the down, thin on the up. We have um, a beginner lettering series that also goes over if that will help you to just get more practice in if you haven't gone through that. Um, and that will explain the different uh, strokes and foundation strokes. But the whole goal, goal is this, is to think about the different sizing of your stroke. So thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. When you are also doing this, because this is a new, or we're using watercolors and there's something else for you to think about, um, if you are drawing, let me finish this out, and let's say you get to the third letter and you realize if you look at this, how much lighter this is than this color, that is personal preference. When you're playing with watercolors, allow that variance to do its thing. And so it's okay if it's not a one solid color because that's not what we're looking for. We don't want it to look like it's printed. Um, if it starts to get like that, that is when you realize, okay, maybe I should just get a little bit of water and then go back in. The ratio of water to watercolor is you actually don't need a lot because these are already liquid. If you're using, I should mention, if you're using pan watercolors, since those are completely dry, you are gonna need a lot more water to start to use them. Um, but here at Let's Make Art, we're just gonna be using liquid watercolors. So as you continue to move on, when you're doing this, this is just good, a mindful practice to realize that you're not changing a lot, you're just changing super small things. So on this one, I'm gonna draw a little bit smaller. So I need to be mindful of my strokes and just not make them so big. So what I did was I created, let me finish that out. Um, the, the dash line is your X height, so that's where your um, lowercase letters will, will hit. Um, so that might help you as you're practicing to be able to create that. So yeah, you can see how much lighter that is than this, and I just had a little bit less watercolors on it, but it still works. When you get to this one, this one might be the most challenging. Um, if you are familiar with our um, Tombow Dual Brush Pens that we used for some of the past projects, when I've talked about this because it's so big, I've been, I kept saying just don't press as hard. So it's a similar thing to when using this as when you're using the brush, even though this is smaller. So what I want you to do is just think about is just graze. So you can tell yourself, I just wanna lightly graze the paper. So I am going to still think, you can still think about thin on the up and thick on the down, but you don't have to focus so much on it, especially when you get smaller, because the reality is that you won't really see the difference because it's such a small lettering. So just, just focus on instead thinking about lightly grazing. Let me draw a different word because I realize I drew. Let me start here. So I'm just lightly grazing the paper. So you don't have to press very hard compared to if I were to press really hard and not think about it, it would look like that. So instead, think about then on the up, maybe medium on the down, or you can just go than on all of them. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention, this is printed, if you have our box, it's printed on a little bit nicer of a computer paper, but if you have any computer paper that you're just using at home, it's okay for practicing for watercolors, it just might bleed a little bit, but it's just practice, so it's totally okay. You don't have to use um, one of your watercolor sheets, unless you want to and get comfortable with that. Um, just options, okay. If you'd like, press pause and continue to go through this and just practice and start to warm up with your hand to get yourself going. Then we're going to move on to our third step. So this one is we're using gold. And where's my gold? Like I mentioned, in your um, boxes, you will have a little container that has gold like this. Um, gold actually comes like... So gouache is an, here's my container. Okay, so gouache is an opaque version of watercolor. What, if you were to buy it at a store, um, you would see a tube like this. 
So it comes in a paste form, like toothpaste, um, that you squirt out. And so when you're doing this, if you have this on your own, you can just squirt it into your um, palette. But for us who have the box, what I suggest using is using the bottom of your brush. You just need, I say like a pea size, you really don't need a lot of it. You can always add more, but just scrape it onto and get it in your circle. I also sometimes, if you don't have a palette, you can remove this and you can use um, the bottom of your lid. So that's also another option. Okay, so if I were to, I'm gonna use this. Let's say this is a completely dry brush. If I were to just pick this up and paint with it, I don't know if you can see, can you zoom in on this, Keenan? I can zoom in closer. Okay. So when I'm painting with this, it is not paintable at all. It's just a thicker paste, and so that's why it's really streaky. If So what we need to do is we need to add water. You can either, if you have a little eyedropper, this is just a little eyedropper, nothing fancy about this. Um, it's just an eyedropper that I have that you can use if you want to do that. Or if you don't have that, it's okay. And what you can do is you can just dip your brush in and kind of transfer over a little bit of water. So what you're doing is you're just mixing it in. And so that's why you'll notice a little bit goes a long way. You don't want too much water. So let me show you if you have too much water. It would just look like that. So if you look really closely, you can't really even tell that it's gold because it's just super watered down. So this is one extreme and then this is the other extreme. So what you're looking for is that consistency. And even, I might, let me mix this in a little bit more. Um, you're just looking for a consistency that you can paint and it's a little bit more opaque, whoops. Now I need more water. So this will take some trial and error for you to figure out what works best for you. Um, when you're also doing it, I like to kind of use the belly of the brush so I'm not dabbing into it. So use the belly of the brush. And then I also roll into it. Yeah. There we go, so that's a solid opaque color. And I love this gold because um, there's some golds that I've tried that when you touch it, it's kind of the shimmer comes off to touch. So this is a beautiful color that that won't happen to it. Um, so now that I have my gold ready, I'm going to letter my quote. So the quote that I chose was, stay close to those who feel like sunshine. Um, so you can pick your own quote if there's something else that hits home with you and you want to do. Um, the thought behind this is, like I said in the beginning, is for each ring to be a different size. So this is just also a good exercise to just kind of expand yourself um, and try something new if you're not comfortable with either big or small lettering. So when you're doing this is you can choose where you want to start. and the only thing to think about is that on stay, that's the only one, on stay we have the Y that goes down into um, below the baseline. So it's the one that goes deeper. So you, when you're doing that, you can either have it overlap this line or you can just draw it so that the Y comes a little bit higher. and then it sits like that. So when you are painting, stay close. If you ever find that you have it, and if you notice, Keenan, can you zoom in on that? Um, yeah. So if you look at this, you'll notice that it's kind of globby and sits on top of the paintbrush. Is that good? Okay, so you can see that it's a, it like bubbles up kind of, or just sits there. So when I paint, it just kind of, it's thicker and globbier. So what you want it to actually look like is, and that's why I roll into this, 
is now in comparison to that, it's not, it's more seeped into all the bristles evenly. And so when I paint, it can create an even stroke. So as you are doing your quote, if you ever find that it's just a little bit too thick, just use the edge of this palette to your advantage and just roll a little bit off into it. And the other thing is that, stay close. When you are doing this, you might notice, is my positioning okay? Yes. Okay. If you stop moving, it's just the best. <laughs> I know I'm moving a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I should mention this was completely dry, but I would make sure that it's dry before you do this. Um, okay. So what I was trying to say is that as you were doing this, if you noticed that it happens where it's streaky, you might just want to go and dip more often. So, for example, that got really light on the zero, on the zero, on the O, so you can just overlap it if that bothers you. Stay close to those. But to prevent that on the next one is, maybe I try and do I need to do one letter or one stroke? kind of personal preference also on how opaque you want your letters to be. But you might need to, you will, I won't even say you might, you will need to dip, stay close to those, um, more into your gold than you do with your watercolors. So it's an, a new medium to get accustomed to, but it's also an amazing medium because there's a lot more possibilities. Whereas watercolors, you can really only watercolor on watercolor paper. But on this gouache, stay close to those who feel. Um, you can paint on a lot of different surfaces, as we're going to be doing together later on. The other super minor thing is that when I'm dipping, because my letters are smaller, I'm not dipping the entire brush like that. I'm simply just dipping the tip of it and going. Stay close to those who feel. So don't worry about, oh, am I going to fit the entire quote onto one? Maybe you draw bigger than me, maybe you drew smaller than me, um, or your quote is just different. It's okay because um, we're going to transition to the next one as we're doing it. Also, I might as well show, you can also do your S's like that, which is what I tend to do. So again, I am not actually thinking about thin on the up, thick on the down. You can if you want to. I'm just trying to focus on getting my gold. Stay close to those who feel like sunshine. Okay, so as I know that I'm almost to the edge of my um, first ring, I am going to come up a little bit higher so then I can reach into the second ring. So when I'm doing that, I'm going to slowly come up a little bit higher. Stay. So then it will overlap and reach into my second one by the time I get there. So I'm noticing, I might need a little bit more water. Um, so then you're gonna just kind of continue on through. So on this ring, I'm gonna draw it a little bit smaller to fit inside. I also realized if you, that did not dry. Twist. So what I was thinking <laughs> was it dries fairly quickly. Um, obviously, I guess a couple words before it wasn't dry. So just be mindful of that. It might happen to you that it'll sponge, and it's okay. We're going to keep going. Um, but if you feel like where your hand is rested and you want to just take a snack break. <laughs> yes. You, what if every word you take a snack break? Every, every circle, I would suggest every circle. Every circle. Because every word, you're going to be having a lot of snacks slash run out of <laughs> snacks. And you're trying to make those last. 
<laughs> yes. Um, sort of. I mean, all the snacks are good. <laughs> you can have all the snacks. <laughs> Keenan will let you. Um, so it's okay if it smudges. Just be more mindful of that. Um, I'm going to keep going. Keenan can fast forward. I'm going to keep going. Uh, and then I'll meet you at the end. After Perfect. snacks. Snack break, please. <laughs> Cue snack break. I wanted to have Keenan pop in here because I'm at the end of my quote, but I didn't actually finish my quote. So if this happens to you and you get bummed out, I just want to say I got a little bummed out too when that happened to me. So what I am thinking of doing, stay close to those who feel like sunshine. So I have three more words. What you can, what if you want, you can pretend like there's another one and just draw it really small. Ooh, this is really testing my skills. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna draw super small. So when I'm drawing small, I am only, really, really only using the tip. Oh, you know what actually? I'm gonna draw a little sun. Cause I was gonna say, I, with the L sitting right here, I wish that my sunshine could fit right there, but sunshine's too big of a word. So I'm just gonna draw a little sun. Perfect. There. So then you can't really even tell that um, my quote didn't fit all the way. So that's a way that you can improvise. Um, you might be like me, I realize I didn't cross one T here, so if you miss some T's, that's okay, just cross it back over. Um, I was telling Keenan how it's fun to see how different when I did it the first time and then I did it this time. And that's why it's fun to see what you all create. Um, the, also the reason why is that this paper is smaller because like I mentioned in the beginning is that I cut it because um, I want to give this as a gift to frame. So that was it. That was a quicker one. Um, there's so many different nuggets in here. I realize I want to start to do this and do just a little recap of what we learned if you skip towards the end. Um, we did a full watercolor wash and then we learned how to do lettering at different sizing, so small, medium, and bigger. Um, so this was a great exercise to be able to implement that. And then we introduced gold gouache and how to use that. So you'll notice actually if um, Keeney can do an overhead, I still have more gold on here. And like you saw in the beginning, I just used that little pea size of it. So a lot goes a long way for this gold. So don't feel like if you don't have a lot in here, it's okay. I think you mean a little goes a long way. What did I say? A, a lot, lot goes, goes a long, long way. way. Thank you for Which is also me. true. You could do an air bubble. Like <laughs> okay, an air bubble. <laughs> a little goes a long way. There you go. Thank you. Um, so that was all the different things that we're learning. I hope you had fun. Um, come join us if you're not a part of our lettering group. It's called Let's Make Art Lettering on Facebook, so you can join in. I also, I don't say this very often, but I do a Q&A if you have any specific questions on Thursdays at 7.15 in our Facebook group as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to hop on in and join us. We have all these supplies on our website if you don't have our box. And excited to see what you all create. Bye, everyone.